Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is January 4th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You see the state of California right here. Frontal system already blasting across the Rocky Mountains, getting out of our region here. And we'll take a look at what is uh, yet to come because we have some interesting weather coming up as we go on in towards next week. We're going to dive into that in some detail here this morning as we go through the video. First, I want to give uh, thanks to all my uh, current members who are supporting the channel here. I there are 16 people that are either second tier or high tier weather watch reading. You see, I've got to buy a total time as member here. So again, this channel is not possible without you guys. Thanks very much. And I know a lot of people are on the lower level tier there. Much thanks to all of you. Again, not possible without you. Thanks for supporting the channel. If you want to go ahead and do so, you can click that join button down below. You should see it just down below the video here. Now, taking a look at yesterday, I had some interesting weather out here. Check this out. There is Red Bluff here, and I'm going to put this into motion, and you'll see that we had this tornadic storm produced a tornado plenty of lightning associated with it as well you see how this slows down and almost takes kind of a right turn there interacting with the surface there surface based storm definitely a tornado so the webcam saw it there yesterday just off to the east of interstate 5 so yeah had some pretty interesting weather there and you can see that we had that uh, shown here and you can see if we click on that it talks about that tornado um, 8 northeast of Derryville, apparently, between 518 and 521 p.m. There, we got the webcam footage here on the National Weather Service Sacramento. Look at that thing. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger here. And you can see definitely a, tor a tornado there roaming across the countryside. Now, taking a look at the high surf advisory for the Bay Area, this goes on it through 3 a.m. Sunday. Uh, so just a heads up, this goes down towards some of the central coast as well. Some breaking waves, 18 to 22 feet. And Los Angeles National Weather Service. Next big weather event incoming here as we go through 10 a.m. Tuesday through 6 p.m. Friday. Much of next week, we're going to be dealing with this fire threat. Santa Ana winds, wind gusts to 80 miles per hour possible. And we're still trying to pinpoint where the strongest winds are going to be. This was updated yesterday here. And of course, we're going to have some extreme fire behavior with any fire that does get started. And uh, this is warning from the National Weather Service. Low relative humidities. And again, the very strong winds, conditions favorable for rapid fire fire spread and looks like um, they're hedging towards a strong north to northeast wind event here. So 30% chance of moderate, 10% chance of a weak. So we are increasing confidence on this potent wind event coming up here as we go through next week. And just a reminder here to check Caltrans if you want to know where, uh, you know, any incident is going on out there. You can go ahead and check on, uh, for example, road conditions. You can see lane closures. Uh, highway patrol incidents, highway information, chain control. So if I zoom in here, you can see that these are chain controls and you can kind of click on that information there and you can get more information on that and you can kind of see what that is going on. So again, Caltrans, check that out. Now looking at Las Vegas, a recreational forecast includes portions of California here as well. Check it out, not too bad out there. You can see Death Valley, 69 degrees, bring a jacket. Now taking a look at what is to come. So this is last night's European model run. There goes the system that impacted us yesterday and brought that tornado there just to the east of I-5. Now we wait for the next storm here and you know, it's an inside slider. I shouldn't even call it a storm here. It's just kind of a polar lobe dropping down and behind that the high pressure is going to fill in across the Great Basin. We're going to get these offshore winds, but also this becomes cut off a little bit here and it tries to spring some precipitation back up across the region, light amounts, but we'll look at that here in a bit of detail as well. Now, taking a look at what is going on as we go through the day today. Still northern portions getting clipped here with some mountain snow, some precipitation towards the coastline on the lighter side. Nothing like what you have been getting. Then one more weak system moves through here. You can see the snow for southern Oregon, some of northwest Nevada, northeast uh, California, and still some light precipitation across the northwest coast as well. So then we put an end to that and we drop down what is an Arctic front, uh, at least a modified Arctic front across portions of Nevada could stir up some snowfall for the southern uh, for the central and southern Sierra Nevada and this is going to be along the east slopes uh, potentially as well but you see a little bit uh, a little bit of precipitation being wrung out across some of the transverse range here as this upper level low sets up maybe some of the peninsula range here as well and then you can see it spin in there and look it spread some precipitation back into some of the desert areas Arizona and to Baja here but the best dynamics are most likely going to be the east of that system here across portions of 
Arizona, New Mexico, and then pushing off across portions of western Texas. And that moves out of here. And then you can see the high pressure settling, you know, that's going to be with us through much of the next week here, driving those strong offshore winds. We'll take a look at those winds here in a moment. If we look at the GFS, um, pretty good agreement here overall. There goes the weak system here, kind of uh, interacting with that Arctic frontal system moving down. It shows some precipitation back into the Sierra Nevada on the GFS as well. And again, does show some light precip here across some of the desert areas. There's that cutoff low. Again, best dynamics off to the east of that low across Arizona and New Mexico. Then that slides out of here and we're dealing with the high pressure across the Great Basin, Intermountain West for a while. Weak system tries to clip us as we go through next weekend, but you can see we remain very dry through the extended forecast. I mean, look at this. No sign of precipitation until you go way out towards maybe mid-January. And even then, it doesn't look like much. So taking that into account, you can clearly see the 16-day precipitation anomaly well below normal precipitation values here showing up. You can see the red no bueno here as far as precipitation is concerned. <laughs> well below normal, including Northern California this time. Actually, a little bit above normal here for some of the higher terrain, but that's just, you know, because of that system uh, cut off flow moving through the area there. But yeah. Much of California below normal here for the next 15 days. And here's the European last night's run the next 15 days as well. As you can see, the anomaly all the way up into British Columbia, all the way down the West Coast. Now, this is for... Um, percent of precipitation here in December of 2024. And again, I've been talking about this the last few days. You can see just how dry it's been. This has actually been going on close to six months now. And again, above average Northern California, cut off right near the Bay Area. Some of the Central Coast got above normal, but again, not below normal across much of Nevada and Southern California. Nice graphic there from the National Weather Service. So taking a look at 100 meter wind speed. So let's put this into motion. And really, as we are going through uh, the Let's see, I'm going to scroll back here. You can see the westerly still, uh, westerly wind direction still across some of the mountain areas as we go through the day to day. But those are going to start to turn northeast. But these are not the strong winds just yet. This is Sunday. You can see some of this offshore flow developing. But then we start to head on in towards Tuesday. And you see where it comes first. It starts for the Sacramento Valley across some of the higher terrain, Sierra Nevada, pushes down the valley areas. And then we really start to kick off some of these offshore winds, these deep Diablo winds potentially across the Bay Area, and then they really get ramped up here as we go through the day on Wednesday across Southern California. And this may go off and on all the way towards the end of the week. You see some of the strong northerlies across Nevada and the desert areas also. So if we take a look at probability of 10 meter wind gusts equal to or exceeding 50 knots, these are percentages. And I'm going to scroll down so you can see the key down here. You can see if you're in the red there, you're looking between 90 and 100 percent. You can see the purple between 10 and 20 percent and everything in between. So let's scroll off in towards uh, Tuesday. You can see the Sierra Nevada. You know, we start to pick up these wind speeds here. And again, it's going to be out of the northeast direction this time as we go through the day Tuesday. You can see it start to pick up across Southern California as well. And look at this. Some areas up over 90. 90% chance of 50 knots or greater on the gusts. And then that's going to continue on in through maybe the end of the week coming up here. So yeah, this is what uh, the European ensemble probability. So this is taking into account all 50 ensemble members. We run 50 of those and we want run one control run. The control run are the initial conditions best we understand them. The 50 ensemble members have their initial conditions perturbed a little bit here to try to correct for any errors we have in our understanding of the atmosphere. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, take a look at accumulated 10 meter max wind gusts. You can see some of these gusts. If I take a look down here, you can see the max. It's over 70 miles per hour for some areas. And again, trying to pinpoint just exactly how strong this event is going to be. So stay tuned. Check back daily. We'll go over this all again tomorrow. But it's looking like a, a fairly strong event is coming through. And it may be prolonged as we go through next week. Now, on the flip side of this, some areas that are going to be wind sheltered as, you know, in the overnight hours as we go through this upcoming week are going to be pretty chilly here but some of the coastal areas during the afternoon hours are going to be quite warm. So we scroll off into, uh, let's go through Tuesday here, and you can see some of these overnight uh, lows are a, a bit chilly here as we scroll through, you know, what is this, uh, Tuesday morning, let's call it, and then we go on in towards Wednesday morning. You can see some of the sheltered areas, again, below normal. But if we scroll to, towards the afternoon hours, including Northern California, you can see some of the coastal areas are going to be above normal here. So you're going to get some pretty uh, wild swings 
and some of the diurnal, nocturnal variations here, depending on where you are. It's always good to know if you are in a wind sheltered area or if you're uh, some of those areas prone uh, across some of the valleys and the gaps in the mountains of Southern California and for the Bay Area and Sierra Nevada as well. It's always good to know your location. We'll go over that more a uh, bit here over the next few days as well. Now, looking at mean sea level pressure, I do like to show these highs as they start to fill in across the Great Basin. You can see there's that Arctic front sagging south as we go through the day Tuesday. The pressure gradient really increases. There's kind of the surface response of that cutoff low across Southern California and portions of Arizona. And again, power packed pressure gradient here. going to be driving these strong offshore winds off and on as we go on in through next week. Now, high pressure may be sticking around as we go towards the end of the week here as well. We'll monitor that on a daily basis uh, over the next few days. Six to 10 day uh, temperature outlook here. Uh, again, this is from yesterday here. Hasn't updated yet uh, today. Above average West Coast, below normal signal here. And that's what we saw in the European and the GFS models. And eight to 14 days to the above average for California. Eight to 14 day there as well. Um, but yeah. Uh, so again, thanks to all the supporting channel members here. Uh, again, uh, this channel is not possible without you. I think we have up over 80 supporting members. So if you, again, if you want to do so, click that join button down below. Also, if you want a nice weather station, click on the link down below. The Tempest Weather Flow is an excellent home weather station. I am very impressed with that. The smartphone app is just amazing and the desktop app as well. And it's very fun. I'm going to put it on my highest poll here because it's been performing so well and I'd like to get it up there so I can see all that information. It's the first weather station I check when I look at my smartphone in the morning or if I'm out and about, it's just easy to check temperatures, whatnot, and it even sends you notifications um, based on if it starts raining at your house, for example. So yeah, very fun weather station. Uh, otherwise, yeah, we'll do this all again tomorrow. We'll break down this strong offshore wind event. Hope you guys are having a good day otherwise, and I will talk to you later.